Hi everyone. Welcome uh, to today's uh, webinar. As uh, all of you know, the topic uh, today is uh, newsletter marketing. Uh, we'll be discussing what exactly is it, why uh, you should do newsletter marketing, how you can go about it, and what are the benefits of doing newsletter marketing. So uh, today the presentation uh, will be taken by uh, Nilesh Patel, uh, who is the CEO here at uh, Lead Squared. So uh, here quickly, uh, I'll hand it over to uh, Nilesh. Thank you, Minu. Um, and thank you everybody for joining uh, the uh, webinar today. Um, so we, I'm sure everybody would have heard about newsletter marketing. It's a, it's a very known concept and uh, you know, most of the marketers are aware of it. So, uh, so I'm today my focus is really to see, to help uh, the marketers in uh, just highlighting some of the important points of uh, why uh, you know, people, uh, why marketers do newsletters and, uh, and how we can do it. I mean, most people are struggle to, uh, you know, do, to do newsletters. I mean, they start sometimes, but then it just doesn't uh, take off. So we'll just going to talk about uh, some of the things today as in how we can um, start a newsletter marketing uh, strategy and, uh, you know, execute upon it, uh, right? So these are the things I'll cover today. So what is newsletter marketing? A quick overview of that then uh, uh, who should consider doing it, right? Uh, why you should uh, be interested in doing a newsletter marketing, what are the benefits basically for that? Um, and then how to go about, uh, you know, executing on, uh, on newsletter marketing and uh, how to measure the performance and the tools uh, which are available for us to uh, do, the, uh, uh, do the newsletter marketing, right? So let's say what is newsletter mar marketing? So this is the definition I picked up. Uh, from uh, from from Wikipedia, uh, you know, a newsletter traditionally has, is a regularly distributed publication, you know, generally about one main topic that is of interest to the subscriber. So the important thing uh, in this whole line is interest to the subscribers, which is the most important uh, part of newsletter. So that is what the marketer has to keep in mind um, while uh, creating newsletters, and that I think is what it gets lost in in this whole newsletter marketing business. And uh, you know, people uh, uh, then say that it is not effective, not working, and so on and so forth. So, the uh, the first and foremost is the interest of the subscribers. So now, the purpose. I mean, so the purpose for the business uh, for doing newsletters is primarily uh, to engage and nurture subscribers. So, uh, you know, whatever business you may be in, right? Uh, it is important uh, for us to engage with the with our customers and prospects, or in case of uh, you know. Uh, uh, organize, special purpose organizations like you know they could be in NGOs uh, they have constituents or the donor organizations where people are uh, you know raising funds so you have to keep in touch with your uh, constituents uh, you know and so for that newsletter uh, you know is, is a very a good tool uh, and a cost effective uh, way to engage and nurture uh, the the constituents the customers and prospects so then what is the value for subscribers right I mean the subscribers would be interested in looking at newsletters or uh, you know getting engaged with them if and only if the content which you send is of relevance to them uh, depending on their uh, you know so it could be an let's say take an example of an education business or um, where uh, you know you are preparing students for a certain test um, so there uh, you know you would be sending content uh, which could be of relevance to that particular uh, audience so you may help them with information like you know what are the dates of certain examination uh, you know if there are changes in the course structure you would sort of uh, let them know about that so that way you keep engaging uh, uh, you know you would engage your subscribers and by sharing information which is of relevance to them so you're not really selling anything uh, you are only uh, helping them uh, with information which is of interest and importance to them so that's the value which they will receive and for that purpose, they will be interested and active in your uh, looking at your newsletter or rather look forward to the newsletter. Now, what it is not, so this is important to understand. Uh, there's a difference between what newsletter is not and what typical your uh, promotional emails or mass campaigns or mass mail or bulk emails are. So sending emails you know, only which where you talk only about your business and about your product promotions is really not a newsletter. I mean, uh, let's try to differentiate the two. That is something which you're proactively selling. So product uh, 
you know, as a business, we would like to sell as much as we would like. Uh, but you know, the it may or may not be, and in most cases, in majority of the cases, it is of not least of interest to the subscribers, right? Because they are they are not interested in buying a product; they're interested in probably solving their own problems or you know uh, whatever they are dealing with at that moment. And uh, sending unsolicited offers and spam is certainly not a newsletter. So th this is the key differentiation uh, on. So basically. Uh, I mean, sticking to the fundamental point, um, newsletter is really uh, a communication mechanism where you are uh, sharing information which is of interest to your subscriber, and by virtue of doing so, you are engaging them with your business, right? Now, who should consider doing it? Uh, that's a question which uh, probably uh, is a simple one to answer, uh, but obviously there are you know multiple ways one can look at it, but simply put you know any business uh, who is uh, uh, you know interested or serious in engaging their customers or prospects or constituents when i use word constituents i'm referring to businesses who are or, or organizations which are not for profit i mean they are uh, you know these organizations collect uh, some you know could be non profit uh, uh, you know care giving organizations who are not uh, specifically uh, you know making money but they have to also engage their constituents for uh, you know generating donations and stuff so, uh, so any organizations who is really interested and serious about uh, engaging the customers and prospects should consider doing it. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, you may not have a marketing bandwidth or a team uh, to run uh, the newsletters, and you know, it's very understandable. You know, if if your business is really small, um, you know, you do not have marketing bandwidth or uh, really uh, all your focus is and energy and sales uh, operations then i would still uh, i would understand that you know so for those businesses newsletters would not make sense but wherever there is a marketing budget available and you know uh, one should really consider doing this uh, exercise uh, this marketing uh, exercise right now why you should consider doing it so obviously the uh, it is very naturally uh, one can ask a question um, you know why would you, why would you go about doing it i mean what are the benefits for Doing a newsletter, any decision maker in your organization would ask that question. As in, why should I, why should we spend money on this exercise? So, you know, simple benefits uh, are there. And uh, first and foremost is it's a cost-effective way to get the mind share of your subscribers. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of money to do this. First of all, and it's an easy way to communicate uh, your, with your subscribers. So that's the first way. So it's, it doesn't take a lot of money, right? Second way, and this is pretty interesting, right? Is a cost-effective way to find out the interests of your subscribers. So, uh, and when I say that, what I mean is, so let's say if you are uh, if you are a financial services company uh, selling loans, um, you would uh, be uh, you know sending out stuff about uh, you know regularly to your subscribers. So let's say if you do a newsletter program, you may you know highlight what are the new loan products available for uh, for consumers. And you may find that a certain type of loan products may catch more attention, or a certain type of schemes may catch more attention versus others, and that would uh, you know, help you un understand and find and learn more about your uh, subscribers' interest. And so, some newsletters would get higher clicks, uh, higher you know um, opens, and so those things would uh, help you find out. So, so essential. So th this is really a way to also uh, learn about what is the interest of your subscribers and uh, that would include obviously the prospects and customers so you know it's very cost effective way otherwise you have to make a phone call and you know do a lot of marketing surveys and, and so on and so forth to find that information then uh, another benefit uh, which you may uh, get and oftentimes businesses do get this benefit is if you are sharing information which is of um, interest to your subscribers and there is value in that information that information is passed along to other uh, contacts of your subscribers. In return, you would gain new subscribers. So, if your content is engaging, if what you're sending is is making sense, I mean, just take an example of uh, you know, if you are a student receiving a, a newsletter with information on how to um, you know, address a certain uh, you know, mathematical problem. Let's say you are in a, in a grade 12 going for a, a competitive exam. And you find it interesting, you would go ahead and share with your other you know, colleagues, uh, other students. Now, if that newsletter gets shared, the brand of the company who is sending that, you know, also spreads around, and that's a, a cheaper, I would say, of rather it's, nothing is free, but a cost-effective way to gain uh, new subscribers. So, 
Um, that's another benefit you would uh, land in. Now, how to go about uh, doing it, right? So this is a scary question because uh, you know um, everything said. Okay, we like to do newsletters. The benefits are clear, but what are the steps, uh, and how should we really go about doing it? So first, and so these are the these few elements uh, I have listed down here. So uh, building a subscriber database. So obviously, you have to send newsletter. You need to know the people, uh, or you need to have folks who would be actually receiving the newsletter. So for businesses who are starting, uh, you know, uh, afresh, uh, may not have a lot of subscribers, but uh, you know, every business generate leads, right? Let's face it. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in business. So when you generate leads, if you keep on uh, you know, piling those leads in a common place, uh, you would uh, build uh, your subscriber database. So you have to uh, you know, create mechanism and systems uh, or put systems in place, simple systems, I'm not, when I, I mean system word is a very dangerous word, you know, it kind of give a connotation that's a, it's a huge thing, but simple systems in place to uh, you know, store and collect your subscriber database and there are tools available for that. Uh, then content. So what what we should be sending? Uh, that's again a problem because even if you have subscribers, then okay, then there's a whole lot of work which goes on in building the content which you can send. So what is that we can do? Uh, and you know to build such content, and then design of a newsletter is a big uh, is a big question. I mean people get struggle for that. I think there are more people talking about design than content. So I, I think design is not as big a problem, uh, in my opinion. Then segmentation. Very few people do it. Uh, it's a it's a difficult one to pull off uh, because it needs some work uh, on the marketer side. And then uh, how often should I send? So this is a, a very regular question. Then what about deliverability? Now, if you're sending a newsletter, you really want that newsletter to land in the inbox of your subscriber, uh, not in the spam box, right? So if if it is not delivered, then the whole point of doing it, uh, you know, would not be uh, you know useful. So that's the um, uh, there are a few points on how we should go about doing it. So now, um, what are the elements of building subscriber database? Now, you should really see building subscriber database as a way to, uh, or as a as a way to put a, a sort of a catch, or uh, you know wherever you are generating leads, all the sources from where you are getting interest in leads. So you have to essentially capture them. So that is what uh, the building uh, of subscriber database is all about. So where do you get uh, people coming and looking at your website, your blogs? So you need to have uh, you know websites set up in a way that you have those your you know, newsletter subscription box somewhere on the page. You know, likely to be in an area where it's more visible. In blog, you can have call to action for that. On Facebook, uh, on your company Facebook page, you can have a tab, custom tab. I'll show a screen uh, uh, in just a moment. And then when you go to an events and seminars, you know, uh, you would, uh, these days if you go to events and seminars in, in outside of US, at least I've seen, you know, they give you those uh, leads in a pretty structured format. And so that's, uh, so they, the, the event organizer, organizers uh, do that job for you. If you are going into an event where you do not have that infrastructure, then obviously you will have to collect those cards and, you know, keep, uh, you know, adding those, um, uh, leads into your Excel or in whatever system you're using. Um, so that is another opportunity to not lose the subscribers. So focus on lead capture here too. Uh, if you are a business where people walk in, uh, and these could be your, your regular B2C businesses like real estate brokerages or your uh, you know, loan providers or your education firms who are offering classroom coaching programs and stuff, where uh, people do walk in. And so make sure that at the point of walk in, uh, you are capturing those uh, that information. Uh, a subscriber is also equivalent to, at some level, a lead. So make sure you collect that information when you go to a personal meeting. So collect business cards. You know, uh, come and put that in your uh, in your system or, or whichever you are using for uh, managing subscribers. Then other lead generation sources. So when I say other lead generation sources, I am going to cover uh, the online sources. So you use AdWords or uh, uh, you may use LinkedIn ads or Facebook ads, or uh, you know you may also be uh, doing, let's say, you know, uh, some of the companies also rent database, so they may not buy a database, but they may, let's say, go to uh, a monster.com or a knockery.com or you know Times Jobs or whatever. They will fire an email uh, campaign on on their database, and then so what you can do is you can collect, uh, you can when you so so those are really not newsletters per se; those are promotional emails. 
but you may you may embed a landing page link there when a subscriber or potential subscriber clicks on that you collect the information and that information you should capture in a uh, you know where you are managing your subscribers similarly uh, you know you may have uh, you know adverts and, and facebook ads so those again can uh, go into into the same system plus let's say if in your business you are doing uh, outbound calls right and that's again a, a very normal uh, practice uh, which is adopted by businesses so when you do so uh, you your your team who is uh, you know initiating outbound calls can ask the uh, the the person they are speaking with to uh, you know give their uh, share their information um, uh, about uh, you know so that we can send them emails so they can request them that can we include you in our subscriber database and uh, you know you can uh, uh, you know send the newsletters to them so that's another way so other lead generation sources really means all other places where you are getting leads uh, if you are uh, buying leads from just dial or soleka you know make sure you are not you don't keep those leads always in the inbox you know get this those leads put them in a system where you are going to nurture those uh, prospects because if you don't do it then you are losing on those leads i mean you would lose uh, you know let's say if you are buying leads from just dial you know lead which has come to your business uh, you know one month back uh, i mean you you paid money for uh, procuring that lead but that uh, lead or a uh, potential subscriber is sitting there in your inbox and that will never be reached by you in future so if in your business you have the opportunity to resell to any prospect then uh, you know make sure that you collect and you know store that in a in a, in a, subscri in a subscriber database now uh, a lot of people do this and it's a very common practice uh, however marketing companies shy away from talking this uh, and openly uh, i won't do that but i will not do that i will say that people do purchase database and then they uh, you know send uh, mass emails and all that but that really doesn't count as a newsletter program so uh, it's not a good idea because people aren't, uh, you know anybody who comes and says i want to subscribe i want to you know be engaged with your business you know it is better idea to send them the newsletters rather than you know on a purchase database so it's not a good idea so uh, i was just mentioning to you about facebook tab so uh, on your facebook page uh, you can have custom tabs as you can see in the red box which you can set up and if anybody clicks on this you can take them to a subscription page that could be a landing page where either you can ask uh, the, uh, subs the, the the subscriber to share the information and add them to your database so that is an easy thing which you can do most businesses miss on uh, miss out on this because they create uh, facebook pages but they do not put uh, you know such hooks on there to collect the uh, the subscriber or the lead information so please do that it's a it's a, it's a simple straightforward way to do it and if you need any uh, if you want to know how it is done i'm sure there's tons of information available but you can check also lead squared blog uh, and you know check on how we have done uh, we have explained this thing there so now let's move to the content. Um, so obviously, this seems to be uh, an area where uh, you know most people struggle, right? Um, and what I have noticed, or I have uh, spoken to agencies also and other marketers. I mean, every time I speak, everybody first thing they talk about, okay, we do newsletter design, you know, we do this. So everybody is talking about the design piece, right? Uh, very little attention is being paid to the content part of it. Uh, which is actually the more uh, the more important part, or the or rather most important part, and everybody is uh, focused on uh, look making the newsletter look good, uh, and you know nobody is worried about or uh, about the content. So I think that's the biggest uh, uh, you know flip one needs to do in the thinking that newsletter is not about design; it is about content, right? And what that content has to offer to your subscribers. So that's very important. Now the second is obviously that's the first uh, part, uh, and the second element is the uh, getting con getting content available regularly is another uh, reasons why newsletters never take off. I mean, I've seen organizations uh, you know saying okay we want to do newsletters, but then they you know they get an agency who designs the newsletter. The first thing the agency will ask is okay what content do I put in, and then you know uh, the business is. Uh, looking left and right trying to figure out what content to put in, right? And even if they do once. Right, they miss on the frequency, so irregularly it is being sent, and after a while it gets shut down, and that happens also very frequently. So, uh, not having content creates a big problem, and uh, is a key reason of why newsletters don't take off, or or even if they do, they do not sustain uh, the uh, you know the rhythm. But the important, <laughs> the good thing is, uh, you know, it's it's not that difficult problem to solve. 
uh, than what most marketers actually think it is. So uh, the solution to content problem is, is is not very difficult. I mean, I'm not saying it was like a piece of cake. Obviously, some work is required um, to do and to address the problem, but it is not a problem which is not addressable, uh, or it, you know, it is it is not very difficult to solve. Because when we start thinking about content, we always think that okay, we have to you know now create a new piece of content, something which is completely fresh and new. But there are ways you can do it, and I have uh, sort of listed some of them here. So, irrespective of whether you are B two B or a B two C business, right? You you will have case studies. You know, you you can build case studies. So obviously, that's an investment uh, which you have to make in the business. Uh, the other way you can look at case studies is by doing customer interviews. And I have found that a uh, actually a simpler way to get content built because uh, you know, writing case studies like you thinking or breaking your head in in writing the whole story. Or if you outsource that, then it's going to you know rob you. Uh, you it's going to cost you a lot of money. So uh, think about doing customer interviews, right? I mean, uh, and those are repeatable. So if you create a questionnaire, and we did ourselves that. I mean, we 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 had a lot of time spending on, uh, we were spending on building case studies. But then we said, uh, let's do customer interviews, and that's an easier way to, you know, get the inputs. So customer talks, right? So you can record those calls, right? And you can then tag those things, and that's not that hard, right? So that is one thing we have tried, and it's it's I would say it's definitely easier to uh, do custom customer interviews. And uh, so in B two C, it's like you can do a dozen of them a day, right? So it's pretty straightforward. Then um, you can uh, so when you send newsletters, it doesn't have to be all your content. You can use third party content. So you can refer to authoritative uh, content outside of your business, which you can reuse in your uh, in your newsletter, and you know give due credit to the people who have written those con uh, that piece of content. And that's not hard to do, right? So if you are in a particular, let's say if you are in a you know some cloud based infrastructure business. And you find a nice piece of white paper out there, which Amazon has written on cloud, or Microsoft has written on the cloud, or Google has written on. I mean, you can use that uh, and share with your customers, right? There's no harm in doing so. It may, I mean, uh, people, you don't have to write that whole uh, cloud document again. You because the the intent of the newsletter as you go back, and the purpose is to engage and provide valuable content. The customers. Would be happy, uh, or the subscribers will be even happy to see that content coming from third party also. They, as long as that content is of uh, value to the um, subscriber. Similarly, you can, if you're if you're a company who invest in writing blogs, then you can repurpose and reuse that blog uh, content in your uh, newsletter, and we do that uh, very regularly. Now let's take an example of B two C, and I've I've taken a few uh, you know, example cases here. So you have uh, education is a, is an in a, in a typical education or test prep business, right? Uh, how you can generate content? So you can offer a free test series and assessment as part of your newsletter program. You can offer tips on how to prepare for a certain exam, or you know, you hear. I mean, you, you can write about okay, how to control your anxiety in an exam. You know, you can uh, if you are a prof if you are a company offering uh, you know uh, guidance or or career counseling to. Uh, people who are graduating from colleges, uh, a lot of them struggle or do not know how to take a job interview, and there are tons of content available right on that. But still, you know, and obviously it may seem like okay, what is new that you can offer? I mean, you can, I'm sure you can find. So because when somebody is looking for a job and you are in a business of providing a certain type of um, skill, you will offer uh, the uh, the candidate. Um, so, for, let's say in a, a simple example, let's say you're an Android training institute, right? You offer Android training programs. So, you would help your uh, student in or your potential subscriber in saying, okay, these are the typical questions one would get in Android uh, in an interview if you go for an Android sort of a job, and this is how you have to tackle it. And you can keep on, uh, you know. So that's one. So I'm not saying that is the only piece of content which you will share on an ongoing basis in newsletter. Similar pieces you can easily find, and those are always there. Um, so another way to look at um, content is if you get a question being asked regularly by your uh, subscribers or students or your business uh, customers, uh, you can put uh, you know articles or find articles relevant to that content and share with your uh, subscribers. In so take an example of travel. You know you can have destination guides. Okay, if you go. Uh, you share with with your subscriber those things. You can you know uh, help them find best deals. You know you can help them find what the best seasons to book tickets and stuff like that. For real estate guys, it can be uh, you know you can you can get a lot of information from uh, you know these the big the big firms like you know 
uh, the Remaxes and all those guys, they have this property price trends across uh, various cities. And so for your city, you can sh uh, share with your subscriber, this is what it is looking. You can tell them about new project launches, you know, and you know, how to, yeah, this is a big one, right? So if you buy a property, right, you would, you won't know what are the nuances of uh, a typical real estate transaction. Anybody who is buying for the first time does not know enough about it and I'm one of the, and I've, I've bought a property and I know that. So you can share those details, okay, these are the pieces of documents you have to, you know. So, so these are the small elements which you can share with your uh, subscribers and engage them. Same is the case with financial services. So you can help them compare the loan products, the insurance products, you know, explain them what are the hidden uh, information in various loan documents. Uh, which the subscriber should be uh, you know, careful about when they buy some other things. So that stuff you can share in the B2C. So uh, that's the B2C part. In B2B, uh, you know, and if you're a software or IT services companies, you can, you know, you would have, uh, I'm sure you would have a marketing budget available. Uh, you know, software firms do have and they do invest a lot. So you, you need to figure out, uh, you know, to, how to create ebooks. Uh, you know, uh, do joint white papers with all these uh, big guys or, or, you know, consulting firms. You know, you can write about technology changes, how is that affecting the businesses, and uh, you know, so and so on and so forth, and share with your uh, businesses. And if you are a business services, so when I say business services, I'm combining a lot of businesses there. So it could be a tax firm, or it could be a law firm, you know, and uh, or it could be an architectural consulting firm. You can so you can write about uh, you know uh, events or trends in in your specific industry and share that with your uh, subscribers. I regularly get. Some of the newsletters from our own, uh, you know, law firm, uh, they send us. Okay, what are the changes of this Companies Act? And you know, so you, as a as a as a customer or as a prospect, I I know that okay, th this firm is actually investing in uh, letting me know about what are the things going on in the uh, you know which may affect my business. So that's huge. That's very so. If you now see, it's not that hard to look at uh, on what should be put in the content. I mean, the business knows what to be there. It is just the willingness to to go about doing uh, that and as I said you know using third party content is absolutely uh, you know is is okay there's nothing wrong about it as long as you are sort of uh, giving the due credit to the uh, party so um, uh, that's the uh, content part um, then I, I'll just quickly talk about the design which uh, I think is overhyped uh, from a newsletter standpoint I mean I won't mind uh, just doing a trying a simple HTML format you know if you're a first timer you want to spend a whole lot on creating a, a that you know classic design. You can start with a simple HTML format. Just try the rhythm going uh, first, and um, if you know what you're doing, right? Then uh, you know these are things which you need to be sort of uh, which you should keep in mind. You know, be consistent with fonts and colors because people with the subscribers tend to you know, look at uh, one format and they just expect the next information piece to be coming in that uh, type. So be consistent on the layout, on the color themes, you know. Um, the design should ensure that email is readable. So when I say readable, so now one should make sure uh, the, because a lot of emails are being read on uh, phones too, right? Uh, significant double digit, 40% uh, or more. So you have to, you know, make sure those emails are, uh, you know, being viewed properly in mobile. Um, so that's, um, okay. So that's there. And then, um, uh, do not cover a lot of things in newsletters. I mean, people cover like you know, uh, hundred things there. I mean, I've seen those newsletters. Um, those don't uh, strike me personally. I mean, it's just too much uh, of uh, overload of information. Um, use good visuals. Um, you know, put um, uh, you know, select good uh, images. Put alt text in images uh, so that you know, if image for some reason. And most likely it will not be uh, uh, by default email clients don't allow the images to be shown. So you have alternate image text available there. So the subscriber can look at the alternate text. Um, make sure you include social share links uh, because if your content is really high quality and shareable, um, you know, make allow your subscribers to share it with their uh, their colleagues and friends and, and so on and so forth. And can spend compliance if you're using a, a, a an email marketing product or something like that, then this will be taken care of automatically. But if you're doing it on your own using an Outlook, um, then ensure that you have unsubscribe links in your uh, uh, or information about how to unsubscribe from your uh, newsletter. And personalize the message. Uh, so try to uh, say the name of the person in the first line, and you know, uh, just make sure you 
you you personalize it for for the uh, recipient. So that's there, and then um, um, follow the subject line best practices. Uh, information on all this has been covered in one of our uh, prior webinars on on email marketing, um, and I would encourage you to look at that. Uh, it's in the previous webinar section in the resources uh, section of our website. So um, so this uh, information can be uh, seen there. Um, then uh, okay, cool. Then segmentation, right? Um, so this is, uh, uh, I would say, not advanced, but this is work. Uh, it is not an easy thing to do. So for businesses where you have multiple products or services, and these products or services are bought by different types of customers, uh, then it may make sense to uh, logically group the subscriber data into two. So take an example of our business. Um, so we are in, 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 in technology and the software business, but we have customers across the board uh, in education, in real estate, and financial services, and so on and so forth. So for us, uh, you know, we are actually in the process of doing this. Is that we are creating, um, uh, you know, content which is going to be relevant for an education company, and we'll send that to them rather than sending them all the generic stuff. We will will want to do that. Not so for us, it is. Uh, it's it's a uh, you know it's a, it's work so we have we have to segregate our uh, our subscribers, but then obviously if we do so the benefits are there because our subscribers will find our stuff more engaging and more relevant. Um, and the flip side is if you don't do it, then uh, you know if you send newsletters which uh, engage one type of audience, then it will turn off the other uh, audience on your subscribers and that will drive the unsubscribes. So um, you know segmentation can be handy and useful. Uh, and uh, one can one should look at doing it if uh, if you have uh, you know multiple types of audience which are catering in your business. Okay, this is a question which probably would come in uh, uh, um, comes in very frequently. Is what is the frequency of newsletter? So uh, it can be a week. You can send every week, every fifteen days, you know, monthly, quarterly. So two there are two points to it uh, of what should be uh, the frequency I mean what you should factor in so first is uh, you should factor in your ability to put together the content so whatever effort it takes right um, that is so if you think it takes too much work to do it in a week then don't do it every week if it's 15 days then you know take it 15 days if it's month then then do it like that uh, or if it's a quarterly second is uh, you have to keep the interest of subscribers in receiving your content so if your subscribers find it uh, that sending a, a, a newsletter every week is uh, you know is going to be painful read for them, uh, then please avoid it. I mean, don't do it. Uh, do it every 15 days or uh, you know every month. So that is a call which you will have to take, and you will find out. It's not that hard to find out because if you do a weekly frequency, your unsubscribe will go up, and uh, and your good customers will call and tell you that please <laughs> you know don't send so much information. And uh, actually, they told us uh, we were sending uh, weekly stuff, and a lot of our customers called us and said you know. Um, you guys are overloading us with information, so we have stopped doing that now, and we are avoiding, uh, uh, you know, not to. So we are, now we are doing 15 days, uh, and we'll see if, it, if that's still too much. Then we'll do, we'll switch to monthly. So uh, it's important uh, that uh, you, uh, you know, you you know that, as in, what is your subscribers are interested in, and if they want a frequency to be lower, then uh, you know, ensure that it is, it is in tune with their interests. Uh, then the other element is deliverability. Um, so obviously, you put all the hard work in creating the newsletter, you know, putting the content together. Um, you want it to be delivered in the inbox, right? Uh, if it doesn't go into the inbox, then the, there's no fun in doing all the, the hard work. So uh, you know, a lot of people go with cheap players, you know, uh, spending less money and you know, going for the lowest uh, possible uh, cents or the pesa per email. I don't think that's a good idea. You know, if you're in serious about your own business and serious about engaging your customers, the cost of email, even if it goes two, three, four times, is still pretty low. So, uh, you know, I won't uh, recommend you save money on that. So, pick a reputed some email service provider. You know, um, that's important. Avoid words that are tantamount to spam in subject or body. I mean, that's uh, that's typical email marketing practice too. So, uh, you know. Don't use a discount, offers, free, and those kind of uh, words, keywords in your uh, subject line. Um, then uh, this is an interesting one, and I have we have one customer in travel business, and uh, 
they tried uh, they they were sending email uh, offer with a certain design type uh, and, and then that email whatever you do was going into junk and spam so they redid the html and they changed certain sections uh, and i don't know exactly the details of that uh, but you know they changed the sections uh, you know moved some of the stuff up up down and they figured out that uh, you know after those changes the email was actually going to the inbox so this whole design thing also need to be really checked through um, so you know you you need to do that so that's also has an impact um, then always provide and subscribe opt out link uh, you know remove email addresses that are invalid or contain profane words so obviously if you're using a good email service provider then you would uh, you know you would uh, you would avoid these issues uh, you know automatically um, then maintain a suppression list so if somebody unsubscribed once then please don't send them again right um, and then also there could be certain type of uh, businesses who whom you don't want to send for whatever reason right um, it could be a business dependent uh, so you can create a list which you know so when you when you say a list saying send this uh, newsletter to list A then you can you'll have a mechanism to say okay go to list A with so all the people there but uh, by the way don't send to list B on all the subscribers in that list uh, please don't send it to them so that's your suppression piece and then reply to address should be from valid domain so don't do no reply at whatever you know that dot com that doesn't uh, look good um, and always include a text version of the email so if it doesn't open or if it goes into junk you have uh, your uh, screen your email body doesn't look uh, empty and uh, include view in browser link you know people uh, some people try to tend to uh, click on that first uh, and you know want to read the complete email properly so um, you know, include that and then if you uh, if you are heavy on email um, some people would know this information about DKIM SPF settings so um, you can uh, you know do these settings the advanced setting to ensure the uh, high deliverability and uh, you know building the authentic uh, no, authenticity between the domains so um, so this is a, a setting you can learn more about uh, you know on our website and uh, on internet um, and timing um, so uh, you know newsletters if you are sending it on Monday morning I mean most people don't like it right if you're a business if a B2B newsletters people are very busy on Monday so try to time it on Thursdays or Fridays if you're a consumer company you would know what what are the typical times your subscribers are online and those are those data is not uh, that data is not very hard to find um, so uh, what we have seen with one of our customers is if you send it in the evening around six or five, uh, it's an education firm. Uh, they there's a very uh, you know good time. Uh, the open rates and click rates are pretty high. But if the same thing is switched to morning because the students go to school and so on and so forth. So then you know those emails are piled down in the inbox. They go down and they are never opened up. So so timing is also an important piece in uh, from a, it's not really a deliverability part actually. It's more to do with the uh, you know op uh, open rates and click rates so, so that's there so should we um, uh, I'll just take for a, a pause for a few minutes and see if there are any questions we can address okay so uh, Neeraj uh, has a question uh, he's asked that how long should we keep sending the newsletter until the prospect buys uh, or requires or what should be the lifetime of the subscriber on the newsletter Yeah, Neeraj, so uh, I mean subscriber, uh, even if it's a customer, you should keep, uh, you know, after, even after they buy, there is no harm in sending. So let's say, um, uh, let's say you are, I'll take an example of an education business, right? Uh, if they have, if they, if they have bought your product and they are preparing for a certain exam, and if you're sending them, you know, some stuff to prepare for exam, uh, I mean, there's, it's okay to send that information to them, you know, otherwise, uh, uh, you know, they will so that they can spread the word they'll, they'll learn from your so they will feel that you're still invested in them so I don't see that's a problem uh, plus uh, but there could be certain businesses where it may not make sense uh, or uh, it may be irritant or irritating for the customer so you can take a call I mean I'm just thinking now um, in B2B it won't be a problem I, I can see because you're educating your customers on uh, doing best practices of doing certain things and your customers won't mind that uh, generally in B2C, it could be certain cases where you know it could be a problem, but uh, um, so it could be real estate. I'm just thinking aloud here. You know, if somebody's already bought stuff from you. Um,
uh, would you send it to them because they won't they're not going to buy a house again for next like few years so uh, so that's something which you have to think through I don't have a good answer for that but um, mostly it's not a bad idea it's a good idea to engage your uh, subscribers uh, even after they become your customers okay so George has um, explained his question he's asking how to find um, uh, which what particular time of sending the email will give the best response for different kinds of customer segments hey George so um, there is no one answer uh, so for each segment uh, you know you there will be sub segments also so take an example let's take an education as a good example right so if you are targeting young students who are um, you know class 12 grade 12 or below uh, you would factor in that those guys uh, will go to school so this it's not a good idea to send an email during when they are actually in the classroom right so you would uh, you would be better if if, it, if you send in the evening that's, so that's your uh, nat like a, a simple logic if you are in b2b then um, you would uh, rather not send on mondays because you know obviously everybody comes in the office starts working and, and so on and so forth so the answer to this question is you have to uh, try you know you can try a few a few times uh, and a few days in a given week and then you can uh, assess the performance and then uh, you know set to one which is actually working for you okay so um, Mukta has uh, a question how how lengthy should the newsletter be what should be the optimal number of words to use yeah so Mukta um, I mean, obviously, it it should not be very long, and if it if uh, so, let's say if you're covering one or two or three pieces of information in a newsletter, uh, I would say um, you cover the information uh, a little bit. If, if it's that's a, a longer piece of data uh, of information, then you can take the uh, the subscriber out of a newsletter to a blog or wherever else that piece of content is lying so that the subscriber can look at the entire thing and you know, wherever it, it is there so you don't have to write the entire story uh, in the newsletter uh, however uh, you know if you're just writing one story then you can cover it completely in uh, in that so I'll take an example of this uh, company and some people might know uh, and I'm, I like their newsletters it's an Orange County you know they are these kinds of resorts uh, very expensive resorts by the way so um, I'm I mean, I'm on their subscriber list. They send very nice stories about you know about about those things, and they just write one story, complete one story. Uh, it's not large. It's typically fits into the if in your regular desktop screen. Uh, you with a little browsing, uh, with, with a little moving of a mouse, you can read the entire story. So I think that should be the, the sort of uh, the, the it should not. I mean, I don't number of words, but. Um, Probably less than 500, 600 works is what you should uh, really contain that. Okay. So uh, Siddharth, uh, Siddhant is concerned uh, that he might not stand out in the mass of promotional mails that are there in the inbox. So how to make sure uh, that we stand out? See, the reason promotional emails are promotional emails because they are uh, not uh, you are uh, you know you are uh, you know, actually sending information which is of interest to you and not to the subscriber uh, mostly, and so that's where you would uh, have this issue of missing out. Uh, and if you and also this happens when you are forcefully sending emails to potential subscribers or they are not subscribers; they are just piece of. E email which have never subscribed to your uh, no newsletter if you send that then you know they will they are not interested and they will you know not read it so if subscribe if somebody subscribes to your information then there is a reason why they are doing so and if they are doing so they will uh, be you know uh, happy to receive it so um, george has another question how to make it look good on a mobile device so George, um, so there are tools which are available to uh, look at emails and how they will look on mobile uh, before you send that. So that you can use, uh, you can avail that. Or uh, while you are testing your email, um, you know, if you are, because some of these tools may be expensive, uh, could be expensive. Uh, so you can um, you can send that email first uh, during the test phase. So obviously everybody who sends a newsletter uh, would do a couple of tests before it goes out. We do it. I mean, so we would look it on Outlook, we look it on Gmail, we look it on Yahoo. 
before we before it uh, we send the you know uh, we press the send button so that we look we feel comfortable about it uh, we look it on mobile both blackberry and you know android devices and iphones before we send out so we do the test very quickly and um, you know we are lucky that we have more uh, bandwidth and resources to do it uh, but uh, if you're individuals i mean if you're only a few member team then you might not have that luxury uh, to do it so there are tools available for that uh, which you can use or you can do a simple test on your own uh, as i mentioned so uh, neelam has a question about uh, content so uh, she is asking if um, in the content uh, can we consolidate news and key changes in the sectors as a part of the newsletter absolutely you can do that i mean that's uh, see neelam the important thing really is as i mentioned the interest of the subscriber has to be kept in mind as long as the piece of information which you are sharing is of relevance to them uh, then uh, they won't mind i mean now you should put your own stuff as well but uh, you know as i said third party content is is good no no problem uh, neeraj uh, is has once again a question what's your opinion on video newsletters neeraj honestly i have not tried them um, so i don't have an opinion yet on them um, so i'll reserve my comments on that okay so um, what we'll do is um, we'll continue with the webinar now and uh, we'll take questions uh, once again after some time so okay so we we were discussing uh, on how to measure the performance of uh, newsletter so i'll give you simple stats simple metric here i won't talk uh, a whole lot of uh, gyan uh, because i think most we uh, we miss out on simple stuff and uh, and worrying about all the high performance metrics so first and foremost uh, the standard open click so if you uh, if you if your content is good you are using a reputed service provider you know you have done a um, a good job of designing that you should uh, and your and your content is relevant to subscriber you should uh, see a double digit open and clicks so that's uh, you, you should aim for that in b2c it could be lower um, but uh, open rates uh, usually it is easy to get double digit if your subject lines are are good and clicks is a function of what is there in in, in the email so if you are uh, if the content is relevant in the in the email then you will also get a, a high single digit or a double digit clicks also then uh, newsletters can also contain some promotion offer so when i say promotion i didn't mean to just completely take off the promotion i mean obviously if you are a, a business offering a certain type of product or service uh, you may want to you know give your subscribers certain things for free or or whatever invite them to uh, to take a survey for for you know by giving them a goodie or something so you can set uh, you know so you can find two things in in google so if you first you to set up google analytics obviously so i'm assuming you would have that and then you have to uh, make sure your links are properly set in your uh, in your email so you can find out how many tra how many people from your email campaign have has gone to your website and what is the percentage of traffic uh, has been taken has been you know um, send to the website uh, from your uh, newsletters that information you can find in google analytics if you set it up correctly and then if you have a certain if you're selling something online or uh, even if it's not something selling online but you may be distributing something for free uh, or could be an ebook or white paper or whatever and you want to just know how many people actually downloaded that you can go to you can set up goals uh, you know in your uh, in google analytics and you know and find you know how many goals have been achieved so those things uh, simple things you can uh, use to you can see to measure the performance so i think the um, the uh, and obviously that if the unsubscribes are high okay i didn't i didn't mention that here so if unsubscribes are high uh, or if if they are in single digit percentage you know one or above it's it's something is wrong so ideally unsubscribe should be really low 0 0.1 0 0.2 uh, even lesser than that and uh, you know so if they are getting high it's an indication of two things uh, one is the information which you're sharing is uh, not really useful or to all the uh, you know folks out there or it could be a, a question of segmentation so you may not uh, you, if you segment better uh, then you are uh, you know newsletters will have lower unsubscribes or just that you might have purchased data or you know one of those things is there the uh, other uh, so it's not really performance uh, uh, measurement piece but if you compare your, your uh, 
you know newsletters in general um, because you, you don't send if unless you are sending a, a weekly newsletter you would uh, if you're sending like a monthly thing you would have like 12 in a year right so it's not a, it's not very hard to compare the 12 things so if you compare there you will find out what kind of topics are resonating with your audience and that gives you insight into your subscribers interest and uh, you know uh, will help you uh, tailor your future content uh, strategy around that so th that's just the outcome of uh, measuring and comparing the performance that's just quick uh, email so it's a very standard email campaign report nothing new I just wanted to put it here uh, then what kind of tools one can use um, to do newsletters so first is I mean you don't have to buy a tool to do newsletters okay uh, you can do it with simple outlook uh, as a tool so use uh, you know use simple mail merge I'm sure most of the people would have tried it uh, sending uh, you know through uh, building the list in Excel and you know sending through outlook you know there's a mail merge feature in which you can use but the problem is so it's free so you can do that so that's good so that's a pro the con is uh, you know obviously it's a, it's a nightmare to manage the subscriber list because first is you have to get subscriber all the time in your Excel sheet uh, make sure now they are there then you have to design all your own template and, and, and so on and so forth so design is not big a problem because you may still do simple HTML emails uh, but managing subscribers will be a big issue because if somebody says unsubscribe then you have to go and manually sort of remove that guy from the list and so this uh, is going to be uh, not of much value uh, because the cost of doing so now has gone down substantially so even though this is free uh, I mean uh, you would uh, rather pay and uh, get uh, some email marketing tool which is available however there are tools which are uh, you know good tools like MailChimp I'm sure uh, most people know would hear here would know which are free uh, for a certain limited number of subscribers which you can use so that's great you can use that uh, those tools so that will save you a lot of time and uh, the benefit of using such uh, tools will be that you'll have uh, very nice templates available uh, so you can use those templates you know but most people you know always struggle because they will always there will always be a template uh, you know all they have all the templates but you will still find okay I don't like this I need to change this so now I think uh, some of these uh, paid uh, providers have got uh, you know a better designers available uh, vertical response has come up with something new that's uh, I look at that that's good so you can try that for example right or um, so you can use those things and uh, so with, if you're using tools it's easy to set up and send newsletters and you know it's easy to manage subscribers so the if somebody's unsubscribing and you know, all that's all taken care automatically right and then um, you get all the the basic analysis on clicks and opens right so which you won't get in the uh, in this if you're using your own simple main word stuff that won't be there uh, but uh, the other uh, the the con is it's only the analysis is only limited to open and click right you won't know much about what goes on after somebody clicks on your uh, link right so then uh, there is a, this category of uh, tools uh, called marketing software where you know lead squared sort of falls in as well so um, and you would have heard about marketo and whatnot like other other very expensive tools so you get good templates uh, you know or you may uh, you can it's easy to set up uh, and send newsletter there too it's easy to capture manage and you know nurture subscribers there too uh, but the important thing which you get in these tools is uh, that you get analysis and information beyond open and click so when I say beyond open and click I mean um, so you may be sending a particular uh, uh, blog article uh, to a blog article and, and offer in your email and um, if that is being clicked through and uh, the subscriber has gone and looked at some of your other information on your website that gives you an indication that uh, you know this particular subscriber has more interest so that's an opportunity for the sales organization or for the marketer I mean, depending on what business you are in to again retarget or go after that subscriber and you know give them something of more value or further offers to uh, you know basically sell sell some something to them so uh, the reason you, uh, so the question is uh, which might come in mind is okay the purpose of newsletter to engage a subscriber then why are we talking about selling here so we are not really interested uh, so, uh, so so the what i'm saying really is is that if you if the subscriber is himself or herself is trying to find information on the pricing of your product or a service or flipping through your website they would have some interest so it, there's no harm in calling them or uh, you know if you're doing automa automatic marketing then there's no harm in 
again uh, targeting them with a better offer or another offer to sign up them early because they have shown interest in buying. So it's not that we are selling them uh, proactively, it's just that because they have interacted with our newsletter that we are going after them and uh, you know, uh, selling them or upselling some stuff. So that's there. However, the con is they are paid, so obviously you have to uh, you have to really um, have a budget uh, to you know get those tools uh, to uh, you know to to send newsletters using uh, these marketing tools. So that's it. And then uh, you have these uh, some of these useful links uh, which you can uh, look at. Um, so I think somebody asked about DKIM settings. So you can uh, so we'll send this information, uh, but you can find this in the mandrel.com site. They'll probably explain what the what the setting means. And uh, you know, there are a couple of other links here. So that's with that. I would just say, uh, uh, you know, uh, thank you for uh, for joining here, and we'll probably uh, take some more questions here. Um, so, um, so Minu, over to you. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, thank you, Nilesh. Um, so, uh, Parimal uh, has uh, another question. It's actually an extension of what he had um, asked before. So uh, he's asked that uh, suppose if he's using content um, from a uh, different source. So is, uh, is it legally allowed or uh, should we take uh, permission from the original source, uh, original uh, content creator in writing? So the answer is you can use uh, content, you don't have to take permission unless, an ex unless there is an explicit uh, um, you know, mention of that on, uh, in the, on the site where you are picking the content from. But in the internet parlance uh, really, the most accepted practice is that you credit to the party who is sharing the content uh, of whose content you are sharing. So if you do that, uh, that is good enough and uh, because in internet people want their content to be shared, I mean the world has changed, right, except there is some, uh, some very restrictive websites, most of them really want their content to be shared because they share it only then they get the sort of more, uh, you know, traffic or uh, people come to know about their business. So. As long as you mention their names, uh, I think it's, it's good enough. Uh, unless and until um, there is a very restrictive uh, you know, catch somewhere written on the website. So please check that. But by and large, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. So Athira uh, has asked uh, if there's a difference um, in self-testing versus using a tool to test. Would it hamper the response? Um, I think if you use tools, uh, it's always good. Uh, it's easy because the life of the marketer becomes easier. If you don't have tools, uh, you have to do the hard work. So I think you should look at it from that point of view uh, because tools really make life easy um, for uh, for the marketer. So if you, you know, because it's very hard, people won't have all kinds of devices with them, right? So you can do basic stuff, testing. But again, it's a function of how much you want to invest in that, right? you see uh, that newsletter is going to be like a very key part of your strategy, um, then you should really uh, use, uh, invest on those tools. But if that is not the case, then you know, uh, otherwise it should be it should be good enough if you use any of the any of the standard uh, newsletter services. Uh, Parimal uh, has uh, another question. So he's asking, what is a reasonable percentage of opens and clicks? Uh, so opens definitely should be double digit and uh, click should be 50% or above ideally of the opens. Okay, so Parimal is asking if the images are turned off, how will you measure opens? Yeah, if it's images turned off then you won't uh, really measure opens. Um, you, So I would recommend that you should uh, actually um, focus only on clicks rather than open. So you you anybody here, I mean, focus on click percentage because if uh, if click is high, it means, uh, you know, you have a, you have done a good job. Uh, but if you're sharing the entire content in the newsletter, then obviously the open would also make sense. But unfortunately, there is, uh, you know, no answer to that question because if people turn off their, uh, you know, images, then you won't know open. I mean, that, that's how it is. Uh, Parimal has another question. What are the additional um, uh, analytics that are there beyond opens and clicks? I think first uh, is that um, you know 
you may drive your subscribers to buy your product or service. So that's uh, another analysis. Um, and uh, you get to uh, if you get if your content get, the content gets shared, you get additional subscribers and customers. So that's another uh, analysis. Uh, unfortunately, it's not easy to track uh, those things, and it depends on business to business. You know. So if you if you have a mix of online and offline sales, then it's even harder to find out okay which lead came from where. And uh, but from our standpoint, I mean we, we invest a lot in this uh, our side. I mean we see that people like what we share, and uh, it has helped us gain new customers uh, in in our own business. So um, I would say that would be a, a good analysis uh, beyond uh, opens and clicks. Dipen uh, has a question. Um, does sending emails from company marketing email ID helps, or is it necessary to use marketing tools? Yeah, depend. So you can have uh, email sent on your company's name, even if you use uh, uh, marketing tools. So uh, so that shouldn't be a problem. There is uh, then we have uh, Nizamuddin is asking what tools I should use for bulk email. Uh, I mean there are a lot of them here. I mean you don't have to ask that question because their net is full of all kinds of tools. Uh, you know, benchmark email is one of the cheapest I've heard, which is there, uh, uh, which you can use. It's being used, uh, you know, so if you want, just send bulk email, use that. But today's uh, discussion really centered on newsletter, so, and I'm not a big bulk mail guy. So, uh, then uh, I've seen uh, mailing software which can be integrated with Amazon SAS or any other provider. What do you think of using those and share your experience on the same? So we have not uh, used personally um, uh, the uh, the Amazon SES, um, but I think uh, uh, what I've heard. So we use Amazon SES in our product, uh, you know, in, in some ways. Um, so the the feedback is very good. Uh, if you're using software on Amazon SES, I mean the feedback is very good uh, on that. There is no uh, bad experience as such uh, to be shared there, uh, but. There is no, there is nothing exceptional. I mean, it's, it's probably as good as others. So I think, in, if you really see on mailing software, uh, you know, the, it's less to do with Amazon SES and more to do with the, what they, what you are putting in. So I think, uh, you know, we are taking the discussion too down on Amazon SES and all that. Uh, and I think we should focus more on the content part of it, as I said, right? So we are, uh, uh, you know, we should. Uh, I would rather spend energy on that than you know bother because there are so many tools available which can do. Good deliverability. Uh, Neeraj has another question. Uh, should email marketing and newsletter marketing be done separately? The uh, so obviously the first question is what is email marketing, right? So newsletter marketing typically is targeted for for your subscribers, right? I mean, and most people do email marketing that what is probably understood more widely in the marketing circle is buy the data and send the email, right? So if for that, uh, you know, email marketing, so that's a different thing. I, I'm not talking about that. So it is a different altogether. So newsletters you would send to your subscribers, so folks who are subscribing to your uh, to your stuff and uh, you know the business of sending emails is a completely different subject right uh, you know whether you should do it or not even is questionable um, you know, from our standpoint um, but if you are doing it uh, then uh, you know you can do it separately uh, if at all okay uh, so shubhadeep uh, has uh, asked another question uh, if designing with images is more attractive in case of newsletters so what should be done in that case? Uh, Shubhadeep, I think images are more attractive than design, so you have to choose uh, images properly. So if you have good images, uh, then certainly it looks definitely uh, better, but obviously you also risk uh, the chance of uh, not delivering the email altogether because of the image. So uh, it's a pro and con, but if you're putting an image, please uh, you know, try to make it a good one. So all right, with this, um, uh, I will end uh, the webinar today. Thank you, everybody, for attending. I hope to see you, uh, all of you, in the next one as well. Thank you very much.